Hi, this is Bob. Been working on the ARC5 station here. It'll be a complete station when I get it finished. And uh, I picked up this uh, transmitter at the uh, Fort Wayne Ham Fest this year. Really, really cold day today. This is uh, December 12th, 2013. Temperature was uh, minus 2 degrees Fahrenheit this morning. Very cold. So it's a good day to stay inside and work on the amateur radio equipment. This transmitter has been a lot of work. There were a lot of poor ground connections inside. Uh, they use rivets sometimes for the grounds, riv nuts for the grounds, and, uh, and you need to clean the tube sockets, you need to clean the uh, coil assembly, uh, you need to clean the wipers in the variable capacitors, and uh, then you need to take that uh, big oscillator compartment apart, clean the uh, capacitor in there, make sure everything's making good connections in there, tighten up the screws a little bit. I replaced the uh, triple .05 microfarad capacitor that was mounted in the back. These go bad practically all the time, so I just put in three ceramic units .05 at 600 volts and replaced that. The power supply is right here, and uh, I bought this power supply. It was uh, all beat up and very rusty and covered with about a quarter inch of dust. I bought it at the Angola Ham Fest about two years ago and I paid five dollars for it and uh, that transformer right there if you were to buy it new would probably be about eighty nine ninety five or something like that. It came with the transformer, the chassis and the choke. These are two VR105 tubes in series. They supply 210 volts for the oscillator and the transmitter. These are two OA2 regulators and they provide 300 volts for this transmitter screens. Now that voltage has got a 50 volt Zener diode in series with it, drops it to 250 volts. Now that gives 25 watts output on the bird meter up there. Uh, I can adjust it and get it up to 45 watts out by uh, taking out that Zener diode, but if I do that the keying is really bad and it goes it just chirps like crazy. So I, did, uh, I didn't do that. I just uh, set it up for 250 volts on the screens and I get beautiful keying and that's just fine. I'd much rather have good keying and a 5 watt transmitter than to have really bad keying and a 100 watt transmitter, that's for sure. I made up a little control box for the ARC5 station here. I got a 200 milliamp meter in there. I've got a switch here for turning the meter on and off. These are not labeled yet. And I've got a switch here to flip it on to uh, transmit from standby. And that's connected through a couple pieces of wire back here with banana plugs on. You'll notice also I have three F connectors on there. I'm going to use, that's a double pole, double throw switch. One side is going to turn on the B plus by grounding that center tap on that transformer and the other side will be my antenna switch. A very cheap uh, antenna switch and I'm sure it has more loss than a really good one but it does work and that's going to be fine for this setup. And I'm trying to think of anything else here that I need to come up with and, and talk about. I guess that's it. I want to show you how it works. I gotta, like I say, I gotta put the labels on this yet. Now that little bit of a whistle you hear that's the oscillator starting because I'm keying the cathodes. I've got the IC746 in the other room listening on this frequency. So I'm going to transmit here into the dummy load so you can hear the keying. I think it does pretty good. And about 150 mils of plate current, 75 mils for each one of the 1625s. Stability is very good as shown on the uh, frequency counter. It does move a little bit every now and then, but not bad. Considering it's a 70 year old mod or a 70 year old master oscillator power amplifier MOPA unit.
and here's the bird meter with a 100 watt slug in just about 25 watts doing really nice Remember, if you work on one of these and you want to get good keying, you've got to have regulation for the screen grids of the final output tubes and for the oscillator. And I tried running them both off of the same set of regulator tubes. It didn't work. It chirped like crazy. So you've got to have separate regulation. And uh, I had these uh, VR105s and OA2s in the junk box, so I went ahead and used them. It is a little bit strange, I think, to have four regulator tubes on the power supply, but it works fine. So that's it. Next thing, I'm going to get out the, uh, the BC453 beacon receiver with the homebrew converter on it and hook that up and uh, put this thing on the air. And the transmitter here is a BC459, which is the 7 to 9.1 megahertz ARC5 command transmitter. So that's it. If you do get one of these, be extremely careful. All of these coils and things and the tube plate caps and all that. Uh, I've got a 500 volt power supply. All those things have got 500 volts on them on the BC459. So it's a good, good thing. Uh, what I'm going to do next is turn it off and put that cover on the top so I don't accidentally touch it or somebody else doesn't accidentally touch it. So that's it for right now, guys. I wish you all a very, very happy holidays, 73s, and good DX.